worshiping with us this morning as we continue in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. As this portion of the sermon, we are looking at Jesus calling us salt and light. And he says, you are, so be. Let's begin our worship with our opening hymn, hymn 630, Thy Strong Word.
And we continue with the invocation for the service setting one on page 154 in your hymnal or on the sanctuary screen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we, claim, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your one and only Son as the word of life for our eyes to see and our ears to hear. Help us believe what the scriptures proclaim about him and do the things that are pleasing in your sight through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson from God's word for this morning is taken from Exodus chapter 19. 
God made Israel a nation of slaves in Egypt, his special people. He wanted Israel to be the kingdom of priests that he had called them to be. We read, In the third month after the Israelites had left the land of Egypt, on that same day of the month, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim and came to the wilderness of Sinai, they camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain. This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob and to tell the people of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you will carefully listen to my voice and keep my covenant, then you will be my special treasure out of all the nations, although the entire earth is mine. You will be my kingdom of priests and my holy nation. These are the words that you are to speak to the Israelites. Moses went and summoned the elders of the people, and he set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together, Everything that the Lord has said, we will do. The word of the Lord. We respond by singing Psalm 18c. Uh, This is one of the psalms that is from the Psalter, and so this is both on the sanctuary screen or in the back of your worship bulletin. Our second reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 2. St. Peter encourages us to be what God has declared us to be, members of a royal priesthood and citizens of a holy nation. We hear the the words of St. Peter. 
but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, the people who are God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. At one time you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. At one time you were not shown mercy, but now you have been shown mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and temporary residents in the world to abstain from the desires of the sinful flesh, which war against your soul. Live an honorable life among the Gentiles, so that even though they slander you as evildoers, when they observe your noble deeds, they may glorify God in the day he visits us. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation for the season of Epiphany. Our gospel lesson and our sermon text for today is taken from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its flavor, how will it become salty again? Then it is no good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on by people. You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill cannot be hidden. People do not light a lamp and put it under a basket. No, they put it on a stand and it gives light to all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine in people's presence so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy them, but to fulfill them. Amen, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not even the smallest letter or even the part of a letter, will in any way pass away from the law until everything is fulfilled. So whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Indeed, I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and experts in the law, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. And the congregation may be seated and we invite the young children to come forward for the children's devotion. So... Danny was about your age, and it was Saturday morning, and mom was getting ready to go to work, and dad was going to be staying home with Danny and the other kids, and mom said to Danny, when she woke him up, saying, all right, now what you need to do today is make sure you load the dishwasher and put your clothes away, and do you also need to clean your room? And daddy said, yes, and Danny said, yes, mom. And you know what Danny did? None of it. Nada. Nothing. He didn't do any of any of those things. Does that sound like something that you guys might do? Yeah. It sounds like something that we would do as adults. That we do that all the time where our parents tell us to do something and we don't do it. Or maybe we're in the workplace as adults and our boss, an employer, tells us to do something and we don't do it. And then we hear... God talking to us in his commandments, or Jesus talking to us in his sermon and tells us all these things to do, and we don't do any of them. That means that we are unrighteous. We're not doing the right things that God wants us to do. But yet Jesus says in his Sermon on the Mount today, don't think that I have come to destroy the law and the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill them. What he's saying there is, Jesus came to keep the law, to do all of those things for us. So 
when Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph, told him to do the dishes and put his clothes away and to clean his room, do you think Jesus did it? Yeah. Every time? Every single time. And when his religious leaders told him to do things, Jesus did it every time. And when his heavenly father told him to do it, do you think Jesus did it? He did every single time. He never did it. He never stopped doing it. And what's wonderful is that he gives that righteousness, that right things to us. Because if I asked you, what did Jesus do for you? You'll say, well, he died on the cross to take away my sins. And you're right. But he also kept the law perfectly to give that to us. Does that mean you don't have to do anything anymore? Does that mean you don't have to listen to your parents? You don't have to do your homework? You don't have to listen to God? No. Now you do those things not to be righteous and be right with God to, so that you earn heaven. No, it's that Jesus has given heaven to you, and now you want to show that because he has given you his righteousness. Let's pray about that. Lord Jesus, we pray for these children. We pray for all of us because all of us can be like Danny, that we're told to do things, whether it's for our parents or our teachers in school or our employers or by our government or, and especially by you, and yet we don't do those things. We are not righteous. And that's why we thank you that your son, Jesus, came to fulfill your word. He gives all of those righteous things, all of those right and good deeds to us. So that now when you look at us, you don't see us as sinners. You see us as righteous saints. We thank you for Jesus fulfilling the law in our place. In your name we pray. Amen. And we continue with the congregation singing our hymn of the day.
Peter tell us today, at one time you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Amen. <clears throat> Meet your Christian friends. Hody Childress was a small town farmer and a retired Air Force vet, and he was on a fixed income. But one day, about 10 years ago, he went to the Geraldine Drug Store in the town of the Geraldine, Alabama. He asked Brooke Walker, the owner of the drugstore, if anyone ever came to the drugstore that had difficulty paying for their prescriptions. Walker admitted that it happened all too often. Children then handed over a folded up $100 bill and instructed her, please use this to help anyone who is in need, but don't tell them where it came from. And he also asked her not to let him know who she was helping, just to use her own discretion. And then Childress did that at the beginning of every month with a folded up $100 bill for 10 years. Until last year when Childress became too weak and ill to go into town, to go to the drugstore. And that's when he confided with his daughter and asked her to do that for him. And that continued for a year until this past New Year's Day when Childress died. At his funeral, Childress's daughter talked about uh, her father's anonymous good deeds. And then since then, all kinds of people in the town have come to the family and expressed their gratitude for Hody Childress, helping them out with their prescriptions when they needed it the most. And then They've been passing on those good deeds and paying it forward. As a Christian man, Hody Childress was salt and light to his community. We heard Jesus tell us in his Sermon on the Mount, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how will it become salty again? Then it is no good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on by people. You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill cannot be hidden. People do not light a lamp and put it under a basket. No, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine in people's presence so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Salt in Jesus' time was precious. Salt was used as a preservative at a time when there was no refrigeration. Salt was also used to disinfect wounds and was rubbed on newborn infants to prevent infection. The Egyptians used salt to preserve mummies and, and their corpses for their mummification. The Israelites used lots of salt to purify their sacrifices before they offer them up to the Lord. And salt is still useful stuff. A little bit of salt on your meal brings, some, uh, brings a tickle to the taste buds. We use plenty of road salt, especially the last few weeks after we had all of that snow two weekends ago and then the melting and the refreezing of all of that water. Light shines in the dark places. It can be a small candle or a little lamp lighting up a dark room back in Jesus' day. Or it can be the sunlight that is shining brightly in the morning, chasing away the darkness of the evening. It can be for many of us growing up and holding a flashlight for our dad, fixing things or vehicles around the house. It is our children going around the house, turning on every light as they enter the room, and then the, fa and then the dads doing their fatherly duty and walking around and turning off every light in the house. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Notice what Jesus does not say. He doesn't say, you need to work on your saltiness. He doesn't say, you need to really brighten up your light. No, he says that because you are baptized, because you are converted to Christianity, because you, are, because you have faith in Jesus Christ who is the true salt and the bright light of the world, 
This is what you are. So be what you are. Be salt and light. This world is rotten and, it, and corrupt. It needs to be salted. This world is shrouded in the darkness of sin, unbelief, and, and death. And it needs to be lighted. Fellow saints, where do you encounter this rot and this darkness in our culture? As salt and light Christians in a rotten and dark culture, we see that we are living in and raising our children in an amoral world. What I mean by that is that in the past, people were moral. They did a lot of evil and sinful things, but people knew what was right and wrong. They believed in what was right and wrong. They just chose to do what was wrong. But now we are living in an amoral culture in America, one where people no longer believe in or know what is right or wrong. So they're just going to do whatever comes naturally to them. They're going to do whatever feels good. And what comes naturally is evil. And what feels good is sinful. We are living in a culture that relishes the rot and delights in the darkness. They don't know any better. They have tasted the, the tainted garbage of this world for so long that when they encounter something that is good, right, and moral, they spit it out because it's a shock to the system. They have dwelt in the darkness and dwelt in the shadows of sin and unbelief for so long that when they see the bright light of Christ shining into that darkness... They cower and they hide from that light. Today we're living in a culture where we are being called upon as Christians to no longer just tolerate amoral behavior. Now we must accept it and promote it. They want to drag us into the decay and darkness. And we fall victim to this these tactics by Satan and the devilish followers because we're afraid of being called names, of being canceled, persecuted, prosecuted, of being thrown in jail, of having other people call us the names of unloving, bigoted, hypocritical. We're tempted to have sugar in our shaker. We're, and then we are in danger of losing our saltiness. We are tempted to hide the light of our faith underneath a basket. And then we're in danger of having the light of our Christian faith going out. And that's because we don't want to scare anyone or offend anyone or make others feel like we are being unloving to them. It's just so much easier for us to mind our own business, to let people go their own way, to remain in our Christian quietness. It's much easier for us to hide in the shadows than to shine the light of Christ. It's much easier for us if we do not share the truth of God's salty judgment upon a corrupt world. It's so much easier easier for us if we just go along with the flow than to stand up against the tide, standing upon the solid foundation of the cross of Christ. But when we do any of that, then we are not being what Christ has made us to be. We are not being salt and light. Jesus is the salt that preserves us from the corruption and rot of our sin by being salty and pointing out our sin and the judgment it deserves. He is the salt that preserves us by his perfection. He's the salt that never loses its saltiness. He pours that salt upon our wounds and salt stings. It burns, but it also purifies. It cures us from our infections, both physical and spiritual. He is the salt that prepares your body for death and for the life after death. 
And but while we are here on earth as salty Christians, then he seasons our speech with salt. At creation, God did not leave this world in darkness. As we sang about in our opening hymn, God said, let there be light. And the light cleaved the darkness in half. But after that, Adam and Eve, with their fall into sin, brought a different kind of darkness into the world. This is a darkness of sin and unbelief and death that we are still dealing with today. That darkness wasn't going away by its own either. And so God called his son to step into the darkness. Scripture says, God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And now that we have been rescued from this darkness and brought into the light of Christ, we are to keep following that light. For Jesus himself teaches, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Fellow Christians, Jesus calls you salt because you are precious. You serve a purpose. You are baptized to be the salt of the earth. You are called out of the darkness to be the light of the world. Jesus calls you salt and light, not because of how much you can do, but because of how much he has already done for you. He has chosen you. He loves you. He declares you to be his own. He has rescued you from death. He has spared you from hell. He chases the devil and his demonic followers away from you. He has made you his own. He has set you apart from everyone else and the rest of the world. And now your purpose is to simply be salt. Your purpose is simply to be like, your, your purpose is simply to let others know that Jesus Christ loves you and you love him in return. That's your purpose as the salt of the earth. That's your purpose and goal as the light of the world. As Jesus has confronted your sins, now you are to confront the sins of others. As Jesus has shined the light of his grace upon you, now you are to shine the light of his grace upon others. As Jesus has announced the forgiveness of your sins upon your repentant heart, now you are to shine the light of his forgiveness upon others who are also repentant. You are to take on the difficult task of being salt in an unsalty world, knowing that the majority of people won't listen to you. They won't want anything to do with you. But that's okay. You're still fill, fulfilling your purpose and your goal. You are being what Christ has made you to be. But when you don't do that, then you are in danger of losing your faith and being with the rest of the unbelievers on Jesus left on Judgment Day and hearing them say to you, why didn't you tell me? And then to hear Jesus' righteous judgment and awful words of judgment upon us. It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. As Christian citizens, as Christian parents, as members of the Holy Christian Church, we are called to be a part of the counter counterculture, to shine the light of Christ into the shadowy corners of this world and the dark recesses of people's souls. You are like the moon that is reflecting the light of the Son of God. We also heard St. Peter tell us today in our epistle lesson, and we really sang the epistle lesson in our hymn of the day, where Peter says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, the people who are God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I know this seems obvious, but this struck me as Pastor Lightning and I were discussing this text in our Thirsty podcast, that each one of these words that Peter, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes, they're all plural, that you are not 
a chosen person, a royal priest, a holy individual, a person that is God's own possession. Now you're all called out as individuals and with a purpose brought into something greater than yourselves. You are all plural, not one single grain of salt, not one little flickering candle light, but you are salt to gather. You are a roaring fire to gather because God has brought you out of your homes and brought you into the sanctuary of his holy Christian church. You are called, set apart, chosen for a purpose. And whether you are sh shaken out, wherever that is, whether it's in your classroom, in your home, in your workplace, in your community, that is where Christ wants you to be salt, seasoning and preserving that little corner of the world, wherever God has put you to shine the light into the shadows, do that, especially among those whom you love, who are caught up and threatened by the darkness that is going to envelop them. This is your identity. This is your calling. This is your purpose. It is consistent with what Christ has made you to be through your baptism and conversion. And then Peter, he, he is recounting the words that he heard decades earlier with Jesus' Sermon on the Mount when he says, Now live an honorable life among the Gentiles, so that even though they slander you as evildoers, when they observe your noble deeds, they may glorify God on the day he visits us. What does that look like in real life? Brooke Walker, the owner of Geraldine Drugs, said about Hody Childress, his kindness motivated me to be more of a compassionate person. He was just a good old guy who wanted to bless his community, and he certainly did. He established a legacy of kindness. And now the drugstore has set up the Hody Childress Fund so that others can donate to help people pay for their, for their prescriptions. Fellow saints of God, may we also be salt and light so that when others experience our saltiness and they witness our light, they too may join us in glorifying God in heaven. We pray that we are what Christ has made us to be, salt and light. Amen. Please rise. Again, St. Peter tells us, at one time you were not shown mercy, but now you have been shown mercy. Amen. Let us now join in confessing the, the words of our baptismal faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayer of the church. Lord of the church, we approach your throne of grace only because you have made us a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, the people who are your own possession. You have called us out of the darkness so we may proclaim the praises of you who called you out of darkness into your marvelous light. We have been made your people only because you have shown us mercy. Now we ask you, allow us to be your people who show mercy to others. Lord God, you have made us salt of the earth. Because we have your gospel, we possess the only thing of value in this world and the only thing that gives you a reason to preserve the world. Send your Holy Spirit to work through your gospel so that we act as the preservative that keeps this word from rotting. Lord of light, you have made us lights in this world. 
the darkness of the world continues to grow closer to our lives and homes, send your Holy Spirit to guide us so we let our light shine in people's presence so they may see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Sanctify us to shine into the darkness of the world that people might see and know how different we are. Our love and our good deeds, coupled with our witness to your truth, can shine in this dark world and provide the way to you. Holy Father, cause healing to spring up speedily for the sake of your Son. Have mercy upon those who suffer afflictions of sin in mind and body. Especially today, we pray for Michael Langdon, who underwent surgery to put metal plates in his left leg following a serious car accident last week. Charlie Francis, who fell on Tuesday and needed staples in his scalp. Kelly Tanner, who will be undergoing knee replacement surgery on Wednesday and Katrina Groth, who is recovering from surgery to remove a brain tumor. Where you permit trial to remain, preserve your people in faith until the day when your light breaks forth like the dawn. Lord God, we offer these prayers as aliens and temporary residents in the world. Allow what people hear from our lips, we see, see in our actions, and experience throughout our lives to always give glory to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And we continue to be salt and light, sharing that salt and light in our world through the offerings that support the ministry of Water of Life. During the offering, we ask that you would please sign the Connect card that is in your pew, and then you can place that either in the offering plates now or in the offering plate as you leave the sanctuary after the worship service. Please rise. And we continue to prepare ourselves for the sacrament of the Lord's Supper with the preface on page 165. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lived among us as a human being and revealed his glory as your only Son, full of grace and truth. Therefore, with all the saints and earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate Word, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, be stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. 
As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we glorify and honor you, O God, our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Lord, may this that your body and your blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true Christian faith and a life everlasting. Now peace with God. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please rise. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We close our worship today as we ask for the Lord to guide us in all our ways of being salt and light as we sing hymn 705. be seated. And we welcome all of you who worshiped with us this morning, both those in the sanctuary and those who were worshiping with us online. And if you were worshiping with us online at any time, we ask you to use the the, uh, QR code to let us know that you're there. Uh, Also, all of you are invited to go along with Lutheran Voyagers and our youth group to go snow tubing at the Rock Snow Park on uh, this coming Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. And afterwards, and I'll have a, a brief devotion uh, at the little campfire at the top of the hill. Uh, we ask all of you to attend our special uh, or planned voters meeting. This is the annual meeting that we'll be talking about uh, what we need to approve the budget for 2023 and vote on the new church council members, but also we'll, also, we'll have a, a call meeting for our in-reach pastor. Uh, we also begin midweek Lent with Ash Wednesday on February 22nd. Uh, we'll have 4.30 service at the Racine campus, and then there will be a meal uh, after that every every Wednesday. And then you're also invited for the 6.30 service uh, here at the Caledonia campus. We'll have a soup uh, meal at uh, only on Ash Wednesday, and there's an, uh, an insert in the bulletin about that. Uh, you're invited to learn more about dartball and get involved in that. And then lastly, Pastor Leighton and I interviewed Pastor Lindner, who serves on the board for omissions with us, or with me, and that he serves as the Wells Campus Ministry Director. And we talk a lot about campus ministry. Uh, Pastor Lindner will be here at this campus on August 6th, Sunday afternoon. We're going to be uh, having him and myself talk to all of our se- our juniors in high schools, in our juniors and seniors in high school, as well as all of our college students and their parents about the importance of being involved in campus ministry and a Wells Church while away from home uh, while at school. 
Lord's blessings on your day and weekend. I invite you to turn and greet and get to know the rest of those who are God's chosen people who have been called out of the darkness and into God's marvelous light.